If rationalistic philosophy is deprived of the basis for its own assessment, it will lose its privileged position in relationship to, for example, mythological concepts that do not try to prove the exclusive value of truth. Therefore, for the status of philosophy, the central issue is the criterion of a non-arbitrary rational distinction between rational and non-rational, which we, by following Simeon Frank, will call trans-rational, in order to emphasize the fact that these two concepts are not directly opposite, like for example A and non-A, um, but different, like A and B. And in the event that the exclusive position of rational assertions cannot be proved according to rational criteria, its status should be considered uh, as only hypothetical. And just as Plotinus asked the question about the origin of the optimal of God in the following way, from where does God get the best, from reason or from himself? If from reason, then he himself does not mean anything or means little. But if from himself, then he is complete before reason, and it is not reason that makes him complete. In the same way, one can ask from where do we get the optimal or the best? And statements of the kind, uh, of the kind like the following one of Plotinus, nowhere is the ir irrational better than the rational, are however not conclusions made within the framework of, of the pure rational, since this concept, like the best, depend, um, depends in any case of some kind of preference that does not harmonize with the general impartiality that rational objective truth requires. Preference, in turn, is associated with intentionality and is directed towards something that is ungrounded and arbitrary from the point of view of pure rationality. While a um, purely rational being would constantly be in, in the position of Buridanus donkey. Should two courses be judged equal, then he, um, the will cannot break the deadlock. All it can do is to suspend judgment until the circumstances change, and the right course of action is, uh, is clear. While the, uh, while the continuation of life for the donkey could in such no way be more rational than death. And in this context, we could also echo Simeon Frank once again. Everything that rational thinking can grasp and understand is something static and immovable. Because for conceptual thinking, everything appears as timeless content, as something identical, which being projected onto the time dimension appears to be unchanging at rest. And in this manner, Ber Bergson tells us, uh, however, that after this continuous alone, um, does the intellect form a clear idea. The definition of a rational abstract truth being transtemporal by nature is in correlation with the base, basic logical princi principles. And they are the following. First, we have the law of identity. It's, for example, A is A. Then we have the law of contradiction. For example, it's not the fact that A is the same as A. And then finally, the law of the excluded third. That means that it's either that, um, that something is A or not A. Uh, and the first logical principle, once again, that will be the law of identity, is the source of self-identification, meaning the basis of trans-temporality, uh, of the rational. And the two other logical principles fixate the disjunctive universal unambiguity of truth. In other words, by quoting Bergson again, logic only deals with formulas for things which are constant.